So I wanted to do this rebuild before the Colts kind of showed their hand and said that they're going to do whatever they can to trade up for a quarterback. Uh, I was going to do that anyways, but now it's like, okay, well, it seems like that's physically what they're going to do, which it's hard to say if that's what they should do. I think if they had a new coaching system and a good quarterback, they actually probably could compete. It was a weird team because, you know, they weren't super far out of a lot of games. I know the Vikings are kind of being toted as frauds. Who knows what happens with the Vikings? Maybe they go all the way, but... Uh, you know, they had that big choke against the Vikings, but they were in such a commanding lead of that game. And I just feel like, you know, sure, you have uh, a Matt Ryan that definitely has shown his age and, you know, a receiving unit that is far from great. Uh, Pittman is like the number one here, but, you know, even he is, he's kind of limited in what he could do. Um, you know, he had a little bit better of a quarterback, maybe a way better coaching staff. Uh, they probably easily win that game. And there was, like I said, a lot of games that they could have easily won this year. There were some injury concerns. But overall, the team just seemed to be just not good. Like the offensive line, which we've all kind of thought of as pretty damn good, obviously. You know, some some lanes that we've seen from Jonathan Taylor, uh, you know, they're, they're for him anyways, have been quite substantial. But in general, they didn't really seem to have a great year. Uh, obviously, Jonathan Taylor got injured, but even he wasn't like the greatest. You know, we haven't. You know, he wasn't as good as we normally am used to seeing. Uh, Pittman, like I said, pretty good year one. Uh, not year one, but uh, wide receiver one. Uh, Woods was a nice little uh, pickup for them. Definitely looking for him to be our tight end of the future. Uh, but the real reason why this team didn't really succeed was that offense. I know. Uh, you know, some of these guys on defense's personal seasons weren't the greatest, but as a unit, they definitely weren't the worst, especially when they lost their leader and Shaquille Leonard uh, pretty early on. I mean, I'd consider him their leader. His overall is pretty low. It's funny how uh, I was probably like the one of the biggest Darius Leonard haters around, and all of a sudden, I'm finally like, oh, come on, man. He ain't L86. Come on, man. Give my man some credit. Also a little surprised that Buckner took such a drop for a game company that seems to kind of just let players slide, you know, even if they have a bad year after having a lot of really good years. For Buckner to go down when that's not even really the case is a little surprising. Like, I don't think Buckner was that bad to drop like four or five overalls. It's really weird. It's really weird to me. Uh, Kenny Moore really wasn't that great. The safeties in general weren't that great. I'm just going to start Nick Cross because why not? Uh, Bobby Okariki was pretty good. Gilmore, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember. I think Gilmore got burned a couple of times by some good wide receivers, but I think he's still a pretty viable starter. Uh, Grover Stewart was great, and I'm going to be honest, I also don't know about Quiddy Pay. Yeah, I mean, Quiddy Pay had some pretty tough offensive lines to go against for the most part this season. I know his majority of his sacks and pressures probably came against that Texans team, which we know is really bad. But, yeah, he had a pretty good year. Yannick seems to be good on every team he plays for. So weird how consistent he is. Like, it's just, maybe some of his sacks are, like, coverage or just, you know, blown assignments. Maybe it's not pure talent or technique every time. But, like, he just puts up numbers everywhere he goes. All right, that's all I can tell you. The first thing you would notice about Yannick is, why is this guy on so many teams with these numbers? Like, it really is strange. But, yeah, it's a team that, once again, you know, individual performances weren't the greatest, but their numbers on defense don't look that bad. They actually look pretty good. Like the uh, the per yardage attempt uh, is pretty solid. You know, I was just looking recently at my my Packers team, and you know, for a team that has one of the lowest yards allowed for passing, they're like top five worst yards per attempt. They give up seven yards per pass, pretty much. Now, I don't know if they actually consider that just overall big play because the Packers were susceptible to the big play as well, but. It definitely, if you the eyeball test told you Green Bay's defense as a whole was awful. So, you know, it's just the numbers can be misleading at times. But the Colts' definite big problems were 100% on offense. We just lost a game 63-10 to against Washington. I know these are forced wins and losses, but still. Also, Nick Cross, dev up. 10k XP. So I've looked at the re-signings, and they are actually not too crazy. Bobby Okereke is definitely... Oh, no, it's actually... It's not Bobby Okereke. I always call him that. It's Bobby Okereke, I believe. Uh, so I apologize for all of that. 
business that I have caused you. A four-year 36 kind of seems on the low end real life for him, but, I mean, it's okay. It's it's more than he's asking for in-game, and it is what it is. Paris Campbell, guy that has been stated that they don't want to give up on him. I don't either, but a three-year 17, you're kind of asking me to give up on him a little bit. You know what? I'm not going to give up on him. I'm going to give him another chance, but will he give us another chance? Seven mil per year for Paris Campbell is a lot. So for him to decline that is is definitely reflection worthy. And we're in week 12 and Yannick Ngakwe has 2.5 sacks. So sadly, I will not be re-signing him. And I know you kind of like, well, it's supposed to be real life. It's like, yeah, well, I can't do that, can I? Damn, that would have been perfect. Perfect timing, but he did not get it. Which, speaking of perfect timing, maybe this is the perfect time for you to like and subscribe. And if you're not new, perfect time for you to keep being a legend. I appreciate it. But what I really hope is that we actually do have the third overall pick. I can guarantee that all of the picks are going to be perfect, but, you know, there's some ties and some games that didn't actually go through, and... Where the hell are we? We are way off here, but that's okay. We'll end up trading that. Uh, Texans and Bears are off as well, which I think a huge factor because if the Texans actually held on to the number one overall pick, unless the Texans are convinced to not go QB, which realistically they shouldn't go QB with the team needs they have, uh, I don't think they'd be trading with the Colts to give up you know, a franchise quarterback to their division rival. Uh, but obviously with the Bears being number one, which we'll have to try and fix the best to our ability, uh, that obviously opens things up quite a bit. I mean, the Colts were the second biggest winners of that situation, without a doubt. Uh, but playoffs don't really matter. Turn the XP sliders on zero so we didn't get, you know, overalls and all that up for a season that shouldn't count. Because basically, the rosters are end of season. So it would basically be like playing the 2022 season twice. Wow, Ryman, no shots. Buckner, really good year. Uh, pay, seven sacks, nothing crazy. You know, maybe some dev ups, which I'll allow because, you know, realistically, there could be some dev ups from real life that this team maybe should be getting. But since they don't have the updated rosters that factor in the stats and the scheduling from real life, then what am I supposed to do? You know, and just allow whatever to happen. I'm trying to think of who would in real life would maybe even get a dev up. Not really even sure, to be honest. But Chiefs versus the Eagles, I think that was. With the winner being the Chiefs by seven, that's a hell of a game. Once again, the overall is not going to change because we had the XP sliders on zero, which we'll probably do going forward from now on. Uh, dev ups on offense appear to be none. Not even Campbell, which is really surprising. Uh, Woods, obviously, kind of a wasted season because he can't dev up either. Nick Cross, though, superstar development trade. So from normal to superstar as a 20-year-old safety is quite the year. Quite the year, obviously. Sadly, no one else went up, but that is okay as... This is kind of the first real season we have going for ourselves now, and we have a little bit of money to spend. Oh, it's even more than I thought. We have like $92 million. Uh, Maybe Matt Ryan would have retired, but I think in real life he's kind of due money. So it's like you bet on the Colts finding someone better than you. Okay, well, I'm not paying you more than $7 mil per year anyways. I don't know why I would even have thought to look at the tag price. Oh, Cameron McGrone went up in dev. He's 23. I mean, at the worst, he's a good backup. So a three-year 10 is super fair for us. Not bad for him. He was the, you know, the true starting linebacker for us there. So that's why you start the youth. If you got a bunch of crap in front of him anyways, you might as well start the youthful player because maybe you get a crazy dev up. I'm going to change the XP sliders now, though, because I will 100% forget otherwise. Not that, like, those technicalities really matter, but I am kind of curious to see why Nick Cross went up in dev. Like, how good of a season did he actually have? 99 tackles, 4 tackles for loss. I mean, that seems like the bar is low. That's a low bar there, but hey, whatever. And that's why we have money, is Matt Ryan decided to do the right thing. I guess it doesn't really matter, though, because he probably takes the money to the grave, but maybe he doesn't in Madden terms. No quarterback on the roster right now. We have to change some uh, things around. Tom Brady is here, but he's an 84 overall, so that is interesting. This is a very low overall class of free agents. Josh Allen, I mean, the Colts have a lot of money. Just saying, the Colts have a lot of money. They have need for edge. 
I've recently signed him, though, in a rebuild. I don't really know if I want to go back that route. But if this team's looking for the future. You know, if you're looking that hard at a quarterback, you got to think that, you know, your team is pretty good down the line. So Josh Allen could be a part of that. Although I will say his ratings are kind of trash. So I'm going to pass on him. At this point, he's kind of more of a, of a name than he is like a pure talent. Question is, the trade-up we're going to have to make, will we have the resources to draft edge, which I don't even know if that's really the big need. If you're not going to be able to get a wide receiver right here, which it doesn't appear like we're going to, I think the need is wide receiver in the draft, no? So we have our list of players. Let's see if we get any of them. I'd imagine some. And a little surprised not that we you know, didn't get more. Drew Locke was on our side Sadly, though, Nate Davis is not, which is a mad loss. I can't believe that he didn't sign with us, but glad he's going to sign with whoever he did for a lot cheaper than we offered. Uh, yeah, we offered a two-year 20, but he joins the Cardinals, who are in probably an equally bad situation, especially when you consider division. Lovely. Love I'm glad he decided to do that, because that's, that's what would happen in real life. All right, so we have none targeted. Do we get everyone? Oh, no, we still have some targeted. Crap. Well, we uh, went where an eight-year or a two-year was at 10 for uh, Nathane. Nathane, uh, super strong guard. We just needed somebody. I, I just wanted somebody there that can develop. And, you know, if he's not the guy, it doesn't matter because we didn't really put too much uh, resources into it. And this is my last eval uh, period. And we ended up getting all those guys, which is great. I don't know why they were holding out so much. Like, when Paris Campbell thinks he's going to get better than a three-year 18 in free agency. I mean, that's that's already super generous from us as is. And we have made the pre-draft trade with the Bears for pick one overall, trading four, 38, and 48 next year. And we are going to add a fourth round next year as well to this pot. I'll offer a fifth this year as well. Why not? Just to make it seem like it's a little bit better. Because it is tough. It's it's a tougher decision for the Bears. Is You really hope two teams take quarterback. You're hoping that the Texans still go QB. And you're in mad business. But there's a very good chance that the Texans at two take Carter or Will Anderson. And then at three, the Cardinals don't need quarterback. So it's you know there's a good chance they go that route as well. They need defense. That front seven's not the greatest. So that's there's a really good chance that those two teams do take those. So it's kind of down to... How far do the Bears think they are away? And also how free agency shakes out. They have a lot of money. And, uh, you know, if they fill a lot of those defensive needs, you can't really take a tackle at four or, you know, you know it would be a little too high. Or a tackle at one, obviously, would be a little bit too high. So it's like, what do you really need? What's the value? If you think you're uh, many players away, you definitely trade that pick down. But I would honestly say at this point, it's hard to, it's hard to think, but... Depending on what they can do in free agency, because it's not the strongest class in the world, there's a really high chance that they just take someone at one. I think there's like a 70% chance in my eyes that they draft someone, even though the trade down looks so freaking awesome. I'm still in this video going to be you know, making that trade up and saying that the Colts offer them. Not an offer they can't refuse, but it's a pretty good offer for only three spots down. And I've seen some things talking about how the Texans should trade up to one. That would be just so dumb. There's no way. There's another aspect to the NFL that people kind of just forget about, even though it's staring them right in the face. The idea of saving face. You know how dumb you would look, even though it's going to be a new regime. Uh, you know how dumb you would look tanking? Uh, missing the tank for the first pick overall to then trade up a bunch more assets to get the first pick. <laughs> and then you're assuming if they're going for the first pick, they're going quarterback when their team is nowhere near ready. They would just look like by far the most incompetent team in the entire league by a mile. Here it is, the draft. Colts fans, favorite time ever. Remembering Andrew Luck thinking, have we found ourselves another? Even though it's completely different because we're going to be going Bryce Young and the size difference uh, is definitely considerable but the consensus number one quarterback or number one pick uh, at least you know if it's a quarterback needy team <laughs> at this point I don't I don't think the Bears are super high on quarterback if they took one man I think that would be an L but Bryce Young is going to be our choice got some speed got some strength got some accuracy hopefully got some superstar plus Deb. 
Welcome to the team. Hidden development rate, 91 throw power, 85 speed, 87 excel. We'll say, based on that 40 time, kind of looks way slower than that. But either way, welcome to the squad. And here we are. Next pick, though, being 16. I wonder what the Texans can do. They have a lot of options, and they do go quarterback, which means the Bears just won the lottery. I mean, realistically. But I have seen, you know, Miles Murphy go before Will Anderson for some reason. And, wow, that would be the perfect draft for the Bears. Like, you could not ask for anything better in that situation. I mean, they got mad value from us trading up, and then they ended up getting Will Anderson anyways, which could very well be the pick at one overall, regardless, him or Jalen Carter. But let us move on to the next round, and I just don't see us being able to trade up. So we might lose on some really good talent, but we have literally no choice, I think. Booty is there, which is a very interesting name. Add some speed to this group. Obviously, Paris Campbell's fast, but... Maybe a little bit more talent, but I really like the size of A.T. Perry. He's a little bit of speedier, if you will. Um, any pass rushers, because that is probably the number one need remaining. Lucas Van Ness is there. It's tough because I have so many pass rushers, and they're all there still. Like, I could go Brenton Cox if I had to last second, and ooh. Interesting. He's a day three talent, but he looks really good on the screen there, doesn't he? Like, I don't know. I might trade down here. I, I like there's just so much talent. Why why reach? Well, maybe not even reach, but why take someone when I don't need to? The Niners are gonna give us a late third to get to the late second in this round, which is a okay with me. Twelve spots to gain a third sounds good. And they go corner, which they really needed. Booty is still there, man. That is kinda busted. So is Van Ness. I might have to take Van Ness. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's got enough speed, I think. 479. Give me some Nick Bosa vibes, although the bench press is a little weak. But A power, A block shed. I'm taking Lucas Van Ness. Welcome to the squad. And he's hidden. 81 speed and 85 excel. I think we made a good choice. I think we... And not even just that, but it's a new choice. That's the best part about it. It's a guy that we have not drafted at all in any of these rebuilds, which is awesome. We trade 92, a fifth next year, and a sixth this year to get to 74, which is a bit of a jump, but it is the third round after all. So it's, you know, we're starting to drop back on value. So it doesn't cost as much to get up here, even though a fifth and a six is massive for most teams. Uh, I think in this case, we probably go AT Perry. I do want. Man, do I really stick it out with Jelani Woods when Laporta is there? Man, I do want to tackle for sure. Freeland's still there. All these other tackles are still there. I think with that knowledge, we could use a corner, but maybe not this season. I think with that knowledge, we're going to go A.T. Perry as our new number two wide receiver. A little bit of athleticism. Once again, you're kind of getting another Pittman, but I will take it. And it's a hidden development trade player. 90 speed, 93 jump. A bit more athletic in fairness. I like that pick because you have two really big targets on top of Jelani Woods, assuming he's our starter for a smaller quarterback who may need the help, uh, depending on how that offensive line plays, to hit. I mean, it should be a lot easier to hit those big guys. Uh, Cohen goes, it was a you know kind of a thought of mine. Do I go Laporta? Do I go Laporta and then trade up that, sixth, that fourth round pick to whatever remaining tackle there is? I think you can get away with that. Like, I just don't know if Jelani Woods at, what, 24 years old is him. Good, I'm going Laporta. Sam Laporta, normal development rate, 84 speed, 87 excel. I thought he would have been at least star, and he is not, which is an L. I probably should have went with uh, Caillou Blue Kelly, but it is what it is. We are here where we are now, and I still kind of want to go Caillou Blue. Uh, I don't really want to trade up too much, though. We're going to keep going until one of the tackles is gone. I want either uh, Freeland or Zero. And okay, so we have a choice of several players, but no fifth or sixth round picks. And that is interesting. Kyle Blue Kelly, cornerback, need for the future, but maybe not this season. Freeland's there, and so is Zero. You'd be betting on Freeland being still potentially superstar in this class. Not the most athletic guy, but 6'8", 21 years old. This team could use some uh, some violence at the size. What is Zerer? 
It's about the same, but Freeland is projected as an actual left tackle. So with that knowledge, I'm going to go Blake Freeland and in an development trait. He may still be superstar in this class. I think I drafted him one other time. It was a long time ago, in fairness. Many, uh, many Bengal draft class updates ago. So this may be a sell for real life, but relax. Give me a second because it is a Madden rebuild. You know, it's all about what can they do now for you. Uh, I don't see him doing anything for us in the game. So if he can get us a fifth round pick, which could be very uh, valuable. Probably should have just traded him straight up instead of for those fifth rounds, but or for the seventh rounds with it. Kind of want to go Garner because he's on the bigger side, and this team has a lot of small corners. It's not the most athletic guy, but I'm going to take him. He's a fifth round player. Normal development trade, 92 speed, 91 excel, 6'2", 21 years old. Looks good because of that. Has long-term development chance, though. I don't know how good he's actually going to be, but maybe he's something, maybe he's nothing. Who cares? Looking at our draft class, 79 overall for Bryce Young, which is huge. Van Ness, 73, 73 for Perry, 71 for Laporta, which he is younger, but it gives me question marks on that pick. And then Freeland will start because he's at least star, but I have suspicions that he may still be a superstar in this class. We trade Ryman, a sixth and a seventh round pick for the Rams' fourth round pick. They needed left tackle badly, and we need to get as many good draft picks badly as we can as... We currently have no second round pick, and before that, no fourth, I believe. All right, not that the you know the Colts were the worst Madden roster imaginable, but I think we've done a pretty good job in the offseason. Added a new star plus guard and tackle. A new tight end who's maybe not the greatest, but he is two years younger than the guy we currently had, and uh, his catching is a little bit better. He's got some potential. Maybe we replace that position in the future through free agency. I don't know. We obviously got the franchise quarterback. That was kind of the whole point of this video. Uh, and then wide receiver two at A.T. Perry could be solid. Two really tall, big wide receivers. Safeties look good. Corners, that's to be seen. Uh, D-line, obviously, uh, you know, the DTs are definitely getting on the older side as Buckner is kind of like maxed out at 29 years old. Uh, and then linebackers... I think we're fine there. I think maybe right out you fix DT, maybe at the fix, but not a whole lot of positions that we need to to work on. And like I said, this should be a season that we find ourselves in the playoffs. So not the most ideal season so far. Uh, not the most ideal re-signings list either, as we have to pay some very important names. Obviously, the first and foremost is Jonathan Taylor. However, He's not interested, which is interesting. Why is he not interested? He wants a better career win percentage. Relax. We do have a franchise quarterback close to Jersey. I don't care, okay? Why don't you just uh, re-sign at a six-year, $75 million deal? Thank you. And then Stephon Gilmore, I think probably will be good for one more year, but I do want to take a one good look at him real quick. Yeah, I mean, I, th I actually probably would rather wait. 15.6 is like tag money anyways, so might as well wait. And then Pittman is a lot of money for, you know, kind of a a slower target, but he is a big guy, so, you know, utilize his strengths and he'll be worth the money. 55 mil left. Kenny Moore might have some potential uh, still to uh, be a starter. Grover Stewart, I think, absolutely can be. Is that the style of player we want to keep employing there? If he wants to do a one-year, I will. I think two-year might actually be a little iffy. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then Isaiah Simmon, uh, Simmons. Isaiah Rogers. What's his actual ability at corner? He's not great, right? 81 zone, 74 man. Don't really have room for a safety. Very athletic, though. A four-year deal is a lot. But I think... I think he's worth it. Four-year 28, man. Four-year 30 is my max, I think, for him. And then Julian Blackman, the value is there. So a little bit of an if year. Obviously better than real life, but 7 and 10. Not super convincing. Not really the season I was hoping to have, especially since we don't have our own second-round pick. Uh, we'll take a look at the season. Maybe we had some tough schedule. The Ravens, Bengals, two tough teams there. Raiders, pretty tough in game. Texans, you can't lose those games. Same with the Jaguars, even though they're pretty good. Browns are a pretty good team. Lost to the Jaguars twice. Buccaneers are a pretty good team. Can't lose to the Panthers. Can't lose to the Falcons. You win the games that are winnable, and this is a 10-win team, which is, of course, the playoffs. So, yeah, and you can't use the schedule as a, an excuse, in my opinion. Bryce Young, 
Definitely better than uh, Matt Ryan, but not the greatest season, obviously, for the first pick overall. He is a rookie, though, so that's rookie numbers, it's okay. But considering how good his ratings already are, I would expect it more. Jonathan Taylor, uh, 1548 yards, 13 touchdowns, 5 yards per carry, which is pretty good. Alec Pierce, the number one wide receiver based on yards, over 1,000. Pittman just under 1,000. Laporta with 659. And then Perry, very disappointing at 621. Blocking, doesn't matter who the left tackle is. They're going to always suck. Tackles, two guys over 100 by a lot. Okereke and McGrone, maybe both getting dev ups here. Uh, Quiddy Pay with 14.5, 11 for Buckner. And a really good 8.5 sack season for the rookie Van Ness. Uh, interceptions very low. Kicking was great from Bass, the new kicker, and Rigoberto Sanchez, 52.5, which is great. Kept Isaiah Rogers at kicker turn because he is just that good for us and seemed to work out as he got a return touchdown. Once again, though, just like we were talking about, offensive struggles. That's the reason why we're not in the playoffs here. And the defense, the yards looking really good. Points scored 19th on offense. Defensively, 6th. So if we can just get a better offensive performance, we're good to go. I mean, look at Teddy Bridgewater, 73 overall for the Commanders, leading him to 10-7 and seven and an MVP award. I mean, where are the excuses? If, if he can do that, there's no excuses. And on top of it, we didn't even win Rookie of the Year. It was Stroud, the division rival that did. I don't think the Texans would have been in the playoffs, but 8-9 and nine is a massive turnaround for that team. And they obviously are not. Seventh was the Chargers. Where were they at? Nine and eight. So, yeah, we would have easily been in the playoffs if we uh, would have won those winnable games. Would have been 10 or 11 wins on the year. But once again, sold those games badly. Like, you just can't lose to those teams. Packers versus Chiefs. I seen Jordan Love in free agency, so I imagine Rodgers is the quarterback still. And he wins the Super Bowl by four. Four-hour dev ups. Maybe Pierce... And he does. So we have three star development trait receivers now. Bryce Young is superstar. Laporta still at normal. And Freeland was still superstar in the class, which is busted. And then defensively, McCrone is a superstar. Okereke is still star, sadly, though. And Quiddy Pay and Van Ness both did not go up in dev. But that's okay with me. Interesting. From normal to superstar, and at 24 years old... Has a chance to be the long-term guy. All right, so we waited a little bit. Ooh, Stephon Gilmore apparently worth every penny. That uh, that was not necessarily the most expected thing, although I will say he did drop off a little bit. The uh, overall is misleading by a lot because he lost a lot of man coverage. Still with the depth uh, or the cornerback issues we have and likely letting Kenny Moore go and potentially not re-signing Isaiah Rodgers, we might be looking at like a brand new cornerback group, so I would prefer to keep our very best corner on the roster if possible. So a one-year 16, like originally asked, will not retain him as he would like to play for a new team. The tag is too much. Kenny Moore, my guy, the guy I saw as the number one all along. Welcome back at a one-year 14, and he actually took it. Thank you, Jesus. I will have to... Oh, yeah, now Grover wants a one-year deal. Oh, now he wants a one-year D. He's still not going to take it, though. Wow, okay. I am shocked. I, that's what I was offering him the whole year, and he didn't want it. And then Isaiah Rogers, nowhere near that. I offered way less, or way more than he's wanting right now. 3 or 24, surprisingly takes it. Maybe a little overpaid for the talent level of those cornerbacks, but at the need we have and the money we have... I think it's worth it. Isaiah Rogers, even as a number three all the way down the line, is worth that money. And because we are losing Gilmore, we need a number one slash number two anyways. Nick Bosa, interesting name there. Some really good pass rushers. Some names here that just shouldn't be here. Jeffrey Simmons, especially on a Titans team that is just not really necessarily filled with talent. Definitely a guy that gets re-signed. Same with Lindstrom, just so much talent. Uh, so much money and not so much talent. Why in the hell would they let him go? Uh, Trayvon Diggs. The Cowboys have always been against it, so maybe, maybe he does go to free agency. They've been against the the salary cap wall for some years now, and they've had to lose uh, cornerbacks like Byron Jones in the past. So potentially, and with that potential, maybe we actually pull the trigger on him 
It's a guy that I've never had, and then a Wuzier Bengals are probably going to be against it here too. And yeah, I mean that could have definitely happened. Jeremy Chin don't really need a, a safety. I really need a corner, and Trayvon Diggs being there, I might get greedy. I'm always the guy that's like, ah, it's impossible for that guy to ever go to free agency. But like I said, I think if uh, Dallas is broke, it makes sense that he'd be a free agent. And man, Noah Fant being here, it's tough not to get him. So once again, we could save about 10 mil getting rid of our center, and we do need something to draft. Before we make any more moves and before we advance the uh, you know, Val, I do need to take a look at the college players as obviously we have a pretty high draft pick here. And I would imagine at Buckner's age and kind of overall here, we're probably looking to replace him too. So that's another 20 mil saved. Why not try to make your team as good as possible and just cut your losses at tight end as Laporta was okay, but... Fant is like nearing elite level with that size and athleticism. All right, I'm going to put it on both of them. Uh, hopefully we get Trayvon. I offered him a very good deal. If he doesn't take it, this would be a huge setback. And he doesn't. Please, please, EA. Please. So he took a three-year 56.1 with the bonus being less than equal to the salary over us, who offered him a four-year 95 with 60% of it being guaranteed. I'm sure of it. Thank you, EA. We have been set back tremendously by the fact that this game is coded very, very well. Instead of being set at cornerback, I will probably, assuming there's one that's there, be taking cornerback at pick nine. All right, so uh, the cornerbacks, not the greatest... Uh, talking about grabbing one at pick uh, nine. Didn't bother with Ty Wright, even though he's tall and he's de decently athletic. Maybe that's an A-man, but D-zone, there's no point. This guy looks like a bust. This guy is 23, and Weldon's probably going to be my choice. So this is going to be a massive trade down, which I don't hate in fairness. Uh, that wide receiver looks pretty good, actually. I think he was decently fast. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, absolutely a trade down. Weldon is my guy, and I think Heath is my guy. I had Kendricks, but he really didn't, you know, scout out well. So those are going to be my picks, I think. So that's uh, let's make that trade down, which I suppose will help out next year because I'm absolutely looking for a first round next year if I can on a trade down. Wow, thanks, Houston. I really believe that's true. Now it's risky, but I'm going to take it, and I'm going to use some draft picks to move up to, like, 20 I like that trade a lot, though. I can't pass on it. So we end up trading 27 this year, 91 this year, and 98 this year to move up to 18, which still keeps us that first-round pick uh, for next year from the Niners and allows us to take the cornerback we were looking at, Weldon, who looks good. I'm hoping he's good because uh, we, we kind of put a lot of uh, eggs into this basket. Not the fastest, but with great speed, elite excel, a, a great agility, and some pretty good potentials. I'm going to take that risk. 21 years old. He's hidden. He's the number two cornerback no, no matter what. And that is it. Or he's the number one. Because to be fair, Kenny Moore is the number one corner at that height. Not that 5'11 is much better. But it is better. Is a little iffy. We trade the Broncos 73 and Ryan Kelly for 44. Which, eh, you know, it is what it is. They needed a center. That's a, that was their biggest need. So... We took that play, and I might end up having to trade again because we need an actual center now. But with this pick, I will be taking Mr. Heath, who is not the starter this year, but maybe next year, hoping this time that he's hidden. You know, normally I don't really care too much if they're hidden or not, as the DT is it's not the hardest dev up, but with him being a backup, I hope he is. Steve Heath is, and he looks good, 21 years old as well, and kind of the perfect pick. So we trade a third and a fourth next year with Thomas. Uh, for 79 this year from the Browns, which will be our final kind of big pick. The next pick will be the seventh round, which this pick, I, it sucks our center went, but we have a guard that was built similarly, but I don't know. I really don't know if he's going to be good. Mr. Brian Homan, a little bit on the smaller side, a little bit on the normal side. Ooh, he took a bit of an L there at the center position, but everything else looks pretty good, so yeah... Damn, dude, that sucks. Oh, well. We also don't have, like, any running backs. Luckily, there's always a lot in free agency anyways. Yeah, that was an L. If Homan was hidden, that would have been the perfect draft 
And instead, we downgraded our lineman position. Hopefully, he's at least a decent overall because right now, he's a projected starter. Oh, the cornerback is a very good overall. The DT is pretty solid, too. The left guard, I really just don't want to talk about. But Parker Weldon, how good was he? 78 zone, 72 man, very athletic. He's like another Isaiah Rogers, but maybe higher dev, but also actually going to play cornerback as the starter the whole way. Star dev, still good though. Uh, and I'm kind of curious about the DT because once again, he's not the starter now, but if he's a superstar now, down the line, he'll be really good. Uh, no matter what, he's not going to start, so I might as well take a look at his dev. And his dev is star. I really want to see the center I was going to go for. But you know me, the classic, even though the center definitely did look better, yeah, always have to go with the classic. You have two players, wait until one's gone. Here he is, green to the Raiders, 75 overall. Oh, not only is he a better overall, but he's also hidden. Wow, okay, <laughs> that sucks. And he's an actual center, even though he's kind of built for not center. Star dev. That sucks, because our guy obviously is nowhere near that good, and... Probably not going to be the starter for long, if at all. I like the uh, the youth, but man, and he sucks at power blocking. Yeah, we might need a new center. Year two, year three roster, whatever it is. Not as far together as I would hope, especially at the quarterback spot. Young went up two whole overalls, starting at a young superstar development rate. Thought he would have maybe been a little bit higher. Obviously, he does have an upgrade point here, in fairness. And he looks pretty solid out the gate. But not the greatest of rookie years. Definitely could have been worse. But with the talent we have now, I'm hoping we can see an even better step forward. Maybe Perry actually gets thrown to. Of course, we also added Noah Fance, who is quite the talent. And then on defensive side of the ball, uh, we did add some guys for the future. How long will it take for them to develop, though? I don't know. Especially for a guy like Weldon to come in as the rookie starting uh, at number one corner is is a lot to ask for. DBs are young, but there's a lot of potential there. And linebackers, uh, Okereke maybe needs to be replaced. He's 28, 82 overall. He's not going to get much better than that. Not that he's not great, but yeah, he's definitely not going to get much better than that. And obviously Leonard's getting older and McGrone is, will he ever get there is the question for him. Started his rookie year off with an eight and a half sack season. Now, Gets his first of two breakouts, so that's 10k XP on top of the plus three to power and finesse moves that he's gained. We give Quiddy Pay a five-year 70, which is pretty good for his number. He's about a five and a half sacks this season. Could still get to double digits. He had 14 and a half the year before, so I think that's fine. And then uh, my man here has absolutely saved the guard position for us, so... A five-year 30 if he's down, and he's not. Thank you. All right, at this rate, it's seeming like a Super Bowl win will absolutely end the rebuild. There's no, uh, you know, dynasty building in this video because the game is not a fan of the Colts. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't like the greatest team we've ever built, but it's definitely better than a lot of teams, specifically in this division. Uh, and yet here we are, you know, we're competing with the Texans for the second place spot in the division, which of course they've won on us again. Uh, is the ratings actually going to reflect that? You have an 86 overall Jaguars team who keep in mind have just won 12 games. So they're obviously going to have a bunch of XP from that. And then the Texans who uh, beat us 38 to three this season. Of course they have Justin Herbert because that's realistic. 83 overall, even with him. Yet, this is, you know, kind of where we stand. I mean, imagine we actually won games based on the talent of our roster. Maybe we would be that good, you know? Just maybe. Bryce Young, I mean, in a good season, but I want better from him. Uh, receiving numbers, rushing numbers, kind of exactly where I expect. Perry got involved more. I mean, this is a good balanced attack, and we're just not performing well enough for the playoffs, apparently. Van Ness with one extra sack from last year. Quiddy Pay really must have put on a show as he has 12.5 sacks on the year. And then Buckner with eight, Grover Stewart with six and a half. So probably going to keep one of them, assuming the price is, well, if they don't regress too hard and the price is right. As with looking, like, looking at the numbers like usual, uh, the reason why we can't get to the playoffs is on the offense, I guess. Chiefs versus Buccaneers Super Bowl rematch. And in this one, it is the Chiefs that get the revenge. Taking a look at our DevOps, if we had any. 
None for Pittman, which is such an L. Noah Fant did go up in Dev at least. He is 27 years old and has Superstar with Spin Cycle. I'm sure that makes a lot of sense. What do I even want to give him? Does he short out elite? I guess, like the only ability that... He's wearing number 41. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then defensively, no Dev ups. Not even for Pay, who has put on double digit sacks and then some... Uh, for back-to-back -back seasons now, almost 30 sacks combined over the last two years, which is just, I mean, absurd that he hasn't went up in dev. Cornerbacks, uh, Kenny Moore, still pretty good overall, so maybe. We'll see. Obviously, the regressions actually haven't hit yet, so what am I even talking about? But that's the thing. You know, we have this quarterback uh, contract, uh, you know, window, the rookie QB contract window, about 100 mil to spend. Do you really want to spend it on players that, you know, maybe past their prime? Kenny Moore, I will say... You know, he's still pretty good. His speed's down a little bit, but his man and zone is still really good. And he is built as, I mean, a slot corner, so... Really? 14 mil. I mean, we are underperforming, so if that plays any factor in his mind, then I absolutely don't blame him. Uh, Punter, we can get a new one anyways. And then Buckner, how hard did he regress? He went down three block shedding, which puts him at 85 block shed, 82 finesse. If he wants to stay on the offer that they are telling me, I'll do it. If not, whatever. And he stays. So we have our two DTs for the future. By future, I mean one more year. So we have 85 mil. Smith, we can re-sign. He's 30 years old for a lineman, you know, or will be 30. Not the worst thing in the world. Buckner needs to be replaced, but that's not a yet thing. Paris Campbell, we're going to let go. McGrone, we definitely need a linebacker. So probably going to go that route. And Cross needs a contract. So we really don't have to pay anyone yet. And we have a lot of money. So I'd be fine with spending even like 50 mil here. Which could maybe finally at least put us over the edge to the playoffs. Let alone the Super Bowl. Uh, looking at free agency here though. Cornerback uh, is an option. And what is the difference between Kendall Fuller and Kenny Moore? Are we getting an upgrade here? Especially since he's bigger. Oh we are. Kendall Fuller is going to be our guy. Ooh, we also have Greg Newsome, who's a true boundary and could last a while. I mean, he's 87 man, 84 zone. I think we signed this man up to be our uh, our future cornerback, like long term. Oh, well, we uh, are 100%, it seems, getting a cornerback. The question is, are we going to have too many cornerbacks? Let's see what happens as they're all gone. Who do we get? All of them. Kendall Fuller, Greg Newsom, and Townsend. We just spent a bunch of money on corner. So we spent 40 mil on corner there. I will say we have by far the most depth at the position now. Uh, Kenny Moore is a fourth string cornerback. That is unfortunate. However, we could take you know, the cap hit on that and trade him off for maybe like a third, like a late third. So, that, I mean, those are options. Definitely some options there. Oh, wait, actually, what am I even thinking about? Uh, Kenny Moore actually rejected our contract. So, Isaiah Rogers will just be, like, an overpaid kick returner. Which, I mean, I could live with. So, apparently that Niners pick turned out to be pretty good. I have a DN that can probably play DT. I don't know if he's going to be there, though. And he is not. The Browns took him one pick early. But let me tell you, with the uh, talent we already have on the team and the lack of needs going forward, this draft pick selection could absolutely set us up for a long time in the future. Uh, the Bills trade looking pretty good out of all... Oh, hell no. I'm going with the Buccaneers. Any year now, they're going to suck. One of these years, they're going to suck. And we're going to take that first round from the Bills as well. So we still have two late... Uh, kind of late first round picks with extra picks next year, which is great. These are the players that I have, and I mean, I suppose I'll probably end up taking Leverett. Uh, I really do like uh, Gerard as well, but obviously the season finesse and power move make him a little bit weirder. Uh, Leverett, I'm glad he's still here because I honestly kind of forgot about him and he looks great. So I'm glad he's still here because we're going to take him now. Hit a development rate, kind of like Heath. Will be our future DT number two. You know, it's just, we've got the DT factory running right now. We're going to get 35 and 99 and some other pick from the Browns to move a few spots back. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought it was a little bit further back than that. Wasn't, so that's kind of busted. 
And honestly, because I feel like we've over uh, compensated for our pe oh f block shed. Maybe I don't want him actually. If it wasn't for that block shed, I was gonna go for him. Looks really good outside of the block shed and the forty uh, time. Not gonna do it anymore. That uh, that threw me off. What about Quincy Hopkins? I had another little middle linebacker. He looks a little bit worse though. This guy's super athletic. Doesn't look the smartest, but doesn't need to start right away. Quincy Hopkins, it is. Hidden development trait it is. 22 years old, 90 speed, 90, excel, 86 agility. It's an interesting one because Cameron McGrone needs a contract, and he really, even though he's a superstar already, hasn't developed, like, at all. Going to be betting against the Ravens here to gain a second and a third next, which, I mean, realistically, if there is a can't-miss player next year... We basically can do whatever we want to get to that player. And now with our final need being a guard, we do have a, or a center. We're going to grab this guard who looks decent enough. The best available player that isn't a first round talent. Daquan Logan. And yes, this draft has been pretty good. Got ourselves massive amounts of draft capital for the future. And landed some future starters and even now starters so we trade uh, projected pick 62 for 69 this year, which obviously projected is automatically better than 69. Uh, and if they don't feel like they have anyone, hey, <laughs> if they feel like they don't have anyone this year, then, you know, what's even the point of selecting someone? Whereas we know we have players for this year. Uh, Russell is probably the guy I would want more. Nah, I'm going to go Priestley. I'm going Priestley. Alonzo Priestley, welcome to the squad. Another hidden, why not? 90 speed, 91 excel. Agility's okay, change direction, not. He's a power back, what can I tell you? We trade a fourth and a fifth this year and a fourth next year for 71, was that? I don't even know what pick it was, but from the Ravens, which I think we actually might go with that linebacker. We might need multiple linebackers in the future, so why not knock that out potentially here? Ooh, 459 is a little bit slower than I would have remembered. Good speed, not great. It's got a lot of Bs, though. I'm going to grab Rod Farmer. Normal development trait, but pretty damn athletic and really good change of direction for a linebacker. I don't hate it. It might be early, but we have found ourselves a generational kicker, it seems. So it's never too early for generational. Jeff Myers, and he is 99 kick power. Sadly, don't even really need them, but once again, I don't pass on players that are literally guaranteed. Uh, we have Bass, who actually, I think, won kicker of the year recently enough because he's a superstar. But hey, once again, you, you can't pass up on a guarantee. And I had a feeling about him because he had a bunch of C's and B's and A's or whatever. He didn't have any A's, I lied. Uh, Tim Sexton, 88 throw power, hidden development trait. Super sneaky. This was, uh, you know, kind of a decent draft. I don't know why I took the Browns seventh of all of the teams, by the way. I don't know why, but let's go to the end of this thing, see the overalls, and plug whoever needs to start in their roles and head on to season, what is this, technically four? Or is it technically three? I don't know. Who cares? We'll figure it out. Of course, 75, 71, 71, 75, 71, generational, and uh, yeah, what it seems to be a start of element trait project, but once again, backup quarterback, you can't hate it. And yeah, he is star, but who would have thought? Everyone else, though, I don't care about. I suppose Logan will start, so low overall, you know, a little bit of a raw player. I suppose I've seen worse. You know, usually you have one rating group that's really bad, but he's kind of, you know, neutral start of element trait. The new center regardless, though, because obviously he has the most potential. And then I do kind of want to take a look at the running back, actually, even though he's a backup. Uh, 85 track, 82 stiff arm. No catching ability, but very elusive. Just no change of direction. What do that dev do, though? Star. I was kind of feeling superstar, but not today. Well, to be fair, he actually is a superstar because we have a mentor rookie. Jonathan Taylor has made this man a superstar dev player, which is kind of crazy. All right, year three, year four, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the team. We have great depth. We have great starters. I need the receivers to start developing a little bit quicker, though, as A.G. Perry's 23, and he's really good at catching. His release is solid, but his route running's a little lacking, and my man doesn't get the ball a whole lot. But as far as, you know, would I think this is a great team? I think so. Obviously, linebackers probably need a, an upgrade, but Hopkins, who knows? Maybe he's a superstar. Maybe he's an X-Factor. Probably has a good chance to be a starter next season. Uh, same with uh, Leverett. So... 
I mean, we have a ton of draft picks for next year. We have a lot of the future positions already in place. I mean, the sky's the limit, kind of. So, at $92 million, uh, Braden Smith has been very good, if I'm not mistaken, right? He's been kind of amazing. Maybe not so much this year. Last year was really good, though, as a starting right tackle in Madden. I mean, that's like the hardest job of all time. Uh, two guys I definitely want to keep. Maybe a third in Cameron McGrone. Once again, he hasn't really developed. He's 25, which isn't the worst, but, you know, coverage isn't great. Blockshed's finally getting involved. He has no ability to get to the quarterback. Tackling's good, though. I mean, once again, it's kind of a cheap deal that we originally signed him to without the superstar. Why wouldn't I keep him on this deal, even if he's a backup? 3 or 12 is, I mean, that's pennies. 3 or 54 for Brayden Smith, which is top tier, but he is a top tier player. And then Nick Cross, with his age, is, I mean, long term, right? Long term. 7 year uh, 60 is great for us, and it's decent for him. But yeah, 62 mil. Kind of have to replace a cornerback. Not really. Alec Pierce, I mean, he was playing pretty well for us. How is he playing this season? We've changed things around a little bit roster-wise. Uh, or depth chart-wise, anyways. He had a really good year. His second year in the league. Third year in the league was decent. And then now he's kind of dropping off at the worst time possible. We re-signed Paris to a similar deal to this. Never really used him. Alec Pierce has a little bit more potential, but... Man, I don't know. If he signs for anything under, like, you know, a three-year 20, if he signs to that, we'll do it. If not, yeah, I mean, seven mil per year for a guy I can replace. Eh. Oh, we're in the playoffs. I uh, I just kept simming and simming and simming, and we finally got there. But 12-5, and five, the Titans and Texans suck. Jaguars are still good. However, we are uh, better. Uh, we actually just beat them very recently, too, which was obviously super clutch. Kept the same scheme on from last year. Only difference is we actually are good now. I put the Chiefs offensive playbook on last year when we were struggling. Didn't really get us more wins. And you could see that, you know, Bryce Young's numbers are pretty much the exact same. Uh, Taylor's numbers are a little bit better, surprisingly. Perry had, at one point, it was like week 12 or 11. He had 800 yards, and he just barely got any more yards. I don't understand what, what that's all about, but sure, tackle play was pretty good. DNs have been really good in this one. Heath was amazing. Buckner was okay. Obviously, he's going to be gone after this year. Some interceptions numbers. Uh, Bass has been great for us, though, even though we now have a generational kicker sitting back up. What were the offensive numbers? 15th uh, offensive. Uh, what about points per game? I mean, what is that? Like, maybe 12? Don't know why I looked at it like that. That's <laughs> just the biggest waste of time I've ever seen. Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Offensive player of the year, which is nice for the AFC side. Best running back on top of it, but no other awards, sadly. Either way, that should be a decent little XP boost. Not that he really needs it. And a Broncos team that, I mean, I'm not going to consider any team an easy win with our, our track record this rebuild, but easier than most, I would imagine. Maybe we will have a chance at a dynasty. Who knows? You know, we try to get the two out of three years situation. It's a possibility. 14 to 7. So 14 to 14 to 10. 21 to 10. 28 to 10 at halftime. It's a pretty convincing score, but it's the Colts. I mean, I don't want us to turn into the Falcons, but a couple more chokes and maybe we're there. Not today, though, as we hold on 35 to 20. Moving on to the divisional round. So from no playoffs to a playoff win. And how the hell is Russell still here? What? What roster did I load up? Isn't he like a 76 overall? Ex I gotta see what is. I don't understand what's going on here. Is he holding on by a thread? Especially with the zero XP sliders year one. I thought he would have retired. Yeah, what the hell? How is he still here? It's like he hasn't regressed or something. I don't even know, but he's apparently still here somehow. No idea how that's possible, and I just automatically went back into my normal mode of just going to the playoffs or the Super Bowl, seeing who wins, and then going out of the offseason. But we're still in it, baby. Relax. 89-87. At least the Jaguars are still kind of intact. It really pisses me off that the Texans just somehow have Herbert. How has that not been fixed, dude? There just should be an automatic, like, coding in the game where they just 
drop everyone else and just keep him. I don't care if I see Derwin. I don't care if I see Bosa. I don't care if I see Mac or JC Jackson. I just don't want to see Herbert because why would that be the player they get rid of? It's the quarterback, bro. Of course, not a really good look here for us in this one against the Jaguars who are trying to get their revenge on us after stealing the division last second. And speaking of last second... I mean, if we want to win this game, it's going to have to come from a last-second drive here that I'm going to come in for and try to win it for us. Uh, I still forgot to change fans' numbers, so I kind of kind of rooting against us at the moment. Nice little sidearm, if you will. Quick throw. Got it out there. Kind of tame numbers. Seen some inaccuracies. Let's see if we can win this. Perry inside. That wind-up, though. That wind-up, though, to the 19-yard line. Can we get one more ball off? Pittman, A.T. Perry. Perry, and I mean, we just ran verticals all the way down the field in all Madden, and it, it, it just worked. Man, the coding in this game is flawless, and we need the two. We do not need the two, so the pressure's not necessarily on, but it definitely helps a lot if we can get this. Back in the end zone, and he drops it. You're not re-signed. You're not getting a contract. Sorry, not happening. The perfect throw, and he misses it. This is where 99 kick power comes into play. You can keep this into the end zone. I mean, if you're them, you absolutely return this every day of the week. Dumb not to. All right, let's see if the AI can get the stop. First down kind of wins it. Was that three yards? Another three, it seems. Here it is. First down wins it. This defense is ferocious. You got to press up. What are you, the Packers? Come on. You got to make it hard on them to gain this first. And not by a whole lot, but... Did enough to stop him. It's a fourth and one situation. I mean, you don't expect a fake punt, right? Like, if you're going to go for it, you look like the dumbest coach in the world if you go for a fake punt. You just play offense if you're going to go for it there. Isaiah Rogers, the kick returning guru, getting himself a chance on the return. We're just going to go for all the yards we can. Let's not overthink it, fumble on the punt return, and lose the game. Let's see what the AI can do. Please just don't throw a pick. I want to come in if I have to. Oh my god, I thought it was a pick. He's going to throw no yards. Okay, I mean, that's that's nice. I think he could probably do it without us, but this clock is moving. And I just don't think they're going to handle the clock if we don't come in. And we got to throw that late. Terrible throw. I waited because I thought the corner was going to jump that, which would have obviously opened up Pittman behind. But unfortunately, it did not. And I want to want to make this tough on them. And that's a tough throw. Pittman holds on, and you have to use your last time out. Two, maybe three shots into the end zone for a chance at the championship. Man down the middle, you cannot be tackled in bounds. And that's the matchup we want. Perry gladly doesn't catch it because I don't think he reaches it into the end zone. That was the matchup we wanted. The throw is okay. I need that a little bit more vertical. We can live with that, though. Moving the lineup around a little bit, making it a little bit tougher on them to... Try and decide what's going to go on. Let's actually slant Taylor to try and bring someone else in. Why not Pittman? Who holds on? Touchdown! What a catch! And they're telling me to go for two with two seconds left. The linebacker lets him pass, which that's why I put the slant in there. It's kind of a two-on-one, but the safety... No, the safety doesn't overrun it. The safety misses the SWAT. The corner underneath tries to knock him down, but the strong spec catch hands of Pittman comes down with it. Squib kick. Let's see if they got any special magic. They don't, and we are in the championship round. What a comeback. Let's take a look at the numbers. I mean, both quarterbacks are great. Obviously, we kind of led those kind of comebacks for Bryce Young. It was a nice little drive, the last one, though, when they really needed it, though, uh, without me. Perry was insane. Pittman, though. The two towers, man. The twin towers, we call them. Looking pretty spectacular. Butker missed a kick, and it was all the difference. This would be so disappointing if we end up losing. If we end up losing, uh, you know, out on a Super Bowl here. That would suck. But obviously, the Colts turnaround has fully come into play. And why not? Let's have the bring on the blizzard, dude. We really love Dairy Queen. I mean, they're a faster team than our team is. So this should hurt them more than it helps them. However... We are a dome team, so how much does that play in? Either way, happy to be here and hoping for a little bit of an upset. 7-0, not a bad start. Man, I mean, we can't get these many defensive stops and not score, right? 
Got three there, but so many opportunities without them scoring. You have to take advantage. And just like that, they're up by one. You got to score. Huge touchdown drive. We turned it over. Looks like it's their ball with two minutes left. Mahomes and company trying to clutch up. And in this situation, I mean, you kind of just bring the house, no? I think you bring the blitz, try and force something crazy to happen in your favor. And you don't care if they score right away. You really don't care if they score right away because you have time now. Wearing all white on the return. Oh, that was not... Why would he jump over? Oh, my God. The auto jump feature almost just costed us the game. You have got to be kidding me. I would rather go down. And what are they doing? They're actually bringing the blitz. This is weird. Well, maybe not. I don't care what they're bringing. This is a Pittman jump ball. And he really didn't jump. It was just a ball at that point. You are a monster. Do the jump, please. Trying to just gain some yardage here. Get that ball moving somewhere. Not really going to get it off, and they're going to just pick it. Oh, wow. So if that didn't tell you how high the difficulty is here of us making those comebacks, there you have it. Simply put, wow. Well, that is unfortunately going to end this season in the most disappointing way imaginable. All right, let's take a look at the statistics. Wow. Okay, so we really didn't deserve to win this one. Elements definitely did not go in our favor. Lots of turnovers and just blown opportunities when it came to scoring in general. We'll end up having us lose to the Chiefs in the championship. Technically by three, technically by ten, whatever you want to call it. But it is the Chiefs and Sim, which is basically like trying to punch a god in the face. And who would have thought the Buccaneers and the Chiefs again? What a fun new matchup and the Buccaneers win let's take a look at the dev ups if we had any Perry please oh man Perry was so close to a dev up he's only 82 overall now and it's really starting to get annoying defensively quitty pay finally a superstar but that would be the only dev up on the season for uh, either side of the ball which is really disappointing but a good season with an unfortunate finish so we had a hell of a year with a guy like Kendall Four on the roster, and with his rating still being good, speed's not crazy down. I don't see why we can't offer him like 16 mil, and if he joins back, run it again. There we go. I mean, I'm down. Maybe the lineup like one and twos change, but I'm down. Alec Pierce, I don't want to lose because 82 overall is actually pretty good, but once again, it's another big type guy. He's got a little bit of speed, but it would be nice to just get a straight-up burner. And with the draft picks we have, we can definitely draft that position. It's kind of crazy, but I'm going to I'm gonna let him walk. And going forward, Shaquille Leonard, absolutely not going to get a contract extension because he is uh, definitely regressing hard. He's going to be 32 by the time a new contract starts for him. Quentin Nelson will get the contract, obviously. Uh, Bryce Young will get the tag. Uh, Okereke, we're probably going to be replacing. Same with Isaiah Rogers. And I don't know about the guard, maybe. And then Bass, obviously, we're going to let go because we have a generational. Van Ness gets the contract. Perry gets a contract. Laporta goes to the free agency. Freeland gets a contract. So we definitely need a little bit of money. We, we need quite a bit of money here. Probably save at least 40 mil. So we could spend maybe 20. Terry McLaurin would be a great name to add to the squad, but not a position of need to the point where we would jeopardize the future of this team like that. Jamison Williams is a guy that absolutely just would not be a free agent. And nobody wants Alec Pierce. So at his base value, I will be offering him a contract. And with that being said, other teams have started to join in. I will give him that original three-year 20. If he doesn't want it, so be it. And he will take it. So we have three first round picks and the first of those is 15, which uh, of course is pretty good. The rest, not so much. 29 and then our own, or our own 29 and then 32 from the Buccaneers winning uh, another Super Bowl or Chiefs, whatever happened, who gives a damn. But there's two really good safeties here that could end up playing safety or corner for us in the future. Positions that maybe aren't the biggest needs right now, but at this point in the rebuild, I don't have a big need so I'm kind of willing to take both of them. I was just going to move on until we got... Ooh, did not participate though. I was going to kind of move on until, uh, you know, we got to, you know, one of them and take one. But they're both there. They both look good. And obviously with Strong being fast, I absolutely want Strong. And because I want Strong and this guy looks similar, I'm going to take both, I think. 
6'1", Lamar Alford, who is hidden development trade, 93 speed, 92 excel, change direction is not that great as either his agility and jumping, but he is, once again, a safety after all, great pick, and I think just because I don't want to lose the other guy, I think I'm going to go to the Dolphins pick as well, once again, we have so many picks, I don't know what to do with them, so uh, yeah, we're going to just make this play. So unless we trade for proven talent, there's really not much we can do with the draft picks anyways, so that's what I'm going to do with them. 29 and 61 is very close. Don't tell me the seven's not enough. I just kind of grabbed the first thing that showed up. I wasn't being stingy. I just literally clicked the first thing. And with this pick, we're going to be taking the safety, the other safety. And uh, did we land ourselves two really good safety slash corner hybrids? This guy specifically. We did. <laughs> we did. Hidden for this guy as well. With his agility and jumping being a little bit higher, definitely seems like they intended him to be corner. So... If any of them is going to be a corner, it would definitely be him, if not both. We're trading 49 and 81 with our 32nd pick. The guard Stark looks pretty good. He's on the bigger side. I don't care. Chris Stark's our guy. Hidden development trade. Definitely on the slower side as well, but future lineman starter probably. And at this point, I'm kind of getting a little reckless with the draft because, like I said, we're, uh, we're at the point where we don't really need too much. You know, the best thing we could probably do for this team is trade for a proven wide receiver, but kind of defeats the fun slash purpose of, you know, doing a rebuild. And then Bane, Dennis Bane, he's got a cool name as well. And there you go. Maybe not the way I'd spell Bane, but still cool enough anyways. And do we really need anything else? I don't know. I, th I think I'm pretty uh, satisfied. We get uh, second and third next year from the Raiders who are projected to do really well uh, from our two thirds and a fifth this year. It's not a bad trade for either side. Obviously, it's a little bit worse for them uh, long term considering there's a chance that they aren't as good as they think, but as far as not having to wait a whole year, and if you have your guy, you get him right now, versus us having to wait a full year for, you know, who knows what draft pick. Could be a question mark. Gonna go for a fast wide receiver and hide. Curtis Hyde it is. Normal development rate, super speedy. 54 mil with an 89 overall roster, and two really good safeties. Wow. Okay, I mean, those guys are pretty good. What's the man in zone coverage looking like? Any man in zone coverage upgrade overalls 81 a 76 so or 78 76 strong looks pretty good to be a cornerback I mean to be fair both could be cornerback 80 and 78 Yeah, I mean Alfred has less zone coverage than the other guy So I'm gonna guess I'll put this guy corner. It's not gonna really matter because we don't really have a spot for either of them right now start of the trade for this guy and I suppose Strong goes to free safety. What his his kind of ratings off the top? Pretty solid stuff. Free safety, a little bit less athletic in fairness. Wow. Two really good players. Dev is sadly only star as well, but two insanely high overalls anyways. And everyone else was pretty much a backup, so there's not really much we could have done anyways. But we landed two really talented players, and that's the best you could ask for. This DB group is still as stacked as ever. And, of course, we are going to be losing Isaiah uh, Rogers, who I always want to say Isaiah Simmons, especially since the Cardinals showed up. But, uh, yeah, we uh, we have that situation settled, it seems. Safety, corner, whatever you want to call it. Kind of even maybe thinking, does Julius Strong start over Blackman? I mean, we have Blackman long-term, but really, he he has not developed at all. I think I'm going to. I think, like, what's the point not starting him? Like, why wouldn't I? And honestly, Isaiah Rogers... Nah, I'll keep Isaiah Rogers. Overpriced kick returner, but once again, you're saving 1.5 mil. So, would I pay 1.5 mil for Isaiah Rogers to return kicks for us? Absolutely. All right, year four, no matter what. This uh, is the second to last season or the last season. We do five years max, and technically we're kind of, you know, headed towards six years. Uh, you know, the team is developing. It's not quite where I'd want it to be, but it's definitely developing, and... We will at least get a look at, uh, assuming we don't win the Super Bowl this year, at what life could be like once we have to actually pay Bryce Young. Obviously, we give him the fifth-year option, so we don't have to pay him this year. Next year, we start to, you know, we have to give him a contract, but he would still be under the uh, the fifth-year option price anyways. Get to the starting spot, would you? And I have the XP sliders, unless they change them recently on how much XP you get base. Have the XP sliders on about 150 across the board, and it's still just taking ages to get this team up, but it is what it is. 
That's the situation. Let's roll it. We had a really bad start of the season, and then we turned it around a bit, and uh, we're beating some decent teams right now, so it's all grand around here. Uh, obviously, uh, Quentin Nelson's like that dude. He is worth 20 per at least. Close to 20 per. That's good enough, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah whatever. He's a little older now. Uh, re-signings. Obviously, Van Ness has been a great rookie for us. Freeland's been pretty good. He's getting better every season, and then... Van Ness apparently needs two contracts. Okay, this is getting confusing. You get the the gist. We'll uh, we'll resign the guys that make the sense. All right, playoffs guaranteed with another uh, twelve and five year. Let's take a look at the playoff picture. We'll be the number two seed. We were with the Patriots as the number one. Very interesting team drop. I thought it would have been the Chiefs because they just beat us in week sixteen, I believe. And would we have had the bye week? I do not know. Uh, division, they had more. We would have had more in the opposite conference, actually, so it would not have mattered. So we were the second seed no matter what. But could it still be our magical year? This is the way the season started. Didn't change anything about the playbook, so if the Chiefs playbook can't get you there, then who will? Uh, one and three start, and I was like, uh-oh, and then we just went on a crazy winning streak. Lost two games in between, but really good other than that, and... Well, here we are in the playoffs yet again, back to back with 12 and 5 season. And Bryce Young, really good year. Obviously, the touchdowns taken off of Taylor, but better yards per carry from him. This was an elite season across the board. And uh, Jonathan Taylor could maybe be MVP. I'm glad we paid uh, 20 mil per year over seven for Freeland because he's sure doing really well there. <laughs> Only one guy over 100 tackles in the year. And these two guys have had themselves a duo campaign let me tell you Heath really good Leverett you know pretty solid interceptions higher than we have had in many years recently and then Bass the final year for him is his worst year kick return punt return game from Isaiah Rogers and Hyde not super spectacular by any means but first in yardage 20th in it so nothing can just go right I mean can't Please, first in point score. What about the defensive points allowed? Eighth. So in fairness, it's a pretty good number. Uh, Bryce Young, number two. Surprisingly, Jonathan Taylor, not even close, which is jokes. Uh, offensive player of the year, though, for Jonathan Taylor. Rookie awards, no. Best quarterback, yes. Best running back, yes. Best wide receiver at three. Best O-line, not on the list. Best D-line at number eight and nine. Best linebacker, not on the list. Best DB at number one. So Fuller's a superstar now, I believe. Weldon at five, and then kicker we don't talk about. But this was a very good season statistically, very good season win-loss-wise, and a very good season awards-wise. Could this be the year? Well, the Buccaneers have won against the Cowboys, so, I mean, it seems like it's going to be another Chiefs versus Buccaneers Super Bowl Although, we're looking pretty good to at least give them a run for their money. 21-3, to halftime. That was a really big touchdown for them with that drive. If it was a touchdown, I would have said it doesn't matter, and it doesn't in the end. 38-2, to 41-17 will be the finale. The Jaguars probably getting a little sick of this at this point. They did kind of knock us out recently enough, but we have the last of the last laughs. Uh, Bryce Young looking really good there. Rushing numbers were okay, nothing spectacular. Receiving numbers are pretty good. The two Twin Towers, once again, which two Twin Towers would indicate four towers. <laughs> we don't have that many here. Although we do have a couple of tall guys. I mean, we also, I mean, Alec Pierce is no slouch. Could the difference be free safety? Could it actually be? It's the Chiefs right now. Never mind. All right, going to the end of the game. The Chiefs, a tough matchup. We got a really good start there, though. Stop and a score. They get a touchdown down the field easily, though. We get a touchdown. They get a field goal. And a nice field goal before half. Would have loved to touch on there. Up by 14. Now only up by 11. Come on, defense. They're doing as much as they can. That field goal could be enough. And it appears it will be with a six-yard run for the backup. We're headed to the championship round, and the Chiefs are nowhere to be found. Both quarterbacks, not really the greatest. More of a liability. I guess our quarterback was at least more accurate. I was going to say more of a liability, but... You can't really say that for our guy. Our, you know, Bryce Young was pretty accurate. Just didn't put up the crazy numbers. But it's the playoffs. Believe it or not, it's harder in the playoffs. I don't think people realize uh, the average quarterback stats in the playoffs, though. The way uh, people talk about, uh, you know, different quarterbacks, I don't think they realize that 
you genuinely perform worse in the playoffs. It's the best of the best. Who would have thought? And as you would expect, the number... Wow, there's a lot of yards for Kareem Hunt. The number one seed, who is in 83 overall, is in the championship round. If we lose this, it's it's doomed. And on the other side, it's like Seattle versus the uh, Carolina Panthers. So it's like, I'm not saying either team is terrible and it's many years down the line, but like, if there was a year to win it, this is the easiest year possible, right? 21 to 10 is kind of similar to how last game kind of went. 24 to 10, one field goal slash touchdown puts it away, and they did. Defense gets the shout outs today. They locked up. Absolutely impressive. And just like that, we are in the Super Bowl. Wow, Bryce Young really did not play well. We were like, hey, we're going to take the ball out of your hands, buddy, if you don't mind. Jonathan Taylor and the offensive lines can do the rest. And, I mean, I'd be happy with it if it got me to a Super Bowl, let me tell you. Like, what's the worst that can happen? You lose, and it's like, oh, the quarterback didn't, you know, the coach didn't trust him. Coach is an idiot, you know. If you win and, like, they couldn't trust you, it's like, well, he had a bad day. What can you tell you? They're still in it, aren't they? They're still in it. The Panthers, they can't be that high of an overall, right? Of course, free agency is wild, so you never know. But, yeah, 84 overall. Uh, let's see how they got here. I mean, maybe they got here on a bye week as well. Uh, winning by 17. Okay, the Rams, in fairness. It's not really that big of a deal. Let's take a look at our dev ups. If we had any, Bryce Young actually probably would have went up. Didn't, but Pittman finally does, and so does Fant. Got ourselves some... Uh, Super uh, evasive for Pittman. Evasive in jukebox. What? 77 juke move. He's so beastly other than deep route, which, I mean, with his speed can even get deep. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I don't know, really know why that would be the thing, but sure, I guess. Short in and deep in, I guess, makes sense. And then Fant, the X Factor. Did we? No, it was a defender. It was... Uh, Kendall Fuller that's going to get his dev up. Uh, double me with Bruiser and Short Out Elite, which, I mean, fair enough. Didn't change his number. You know what? I'm not going to change it. It's good luck defensively. Oh, wait. Did he already have a... He must have already won an award because first award should give you a dev up automatically, which Fuller clearly right here has not gotten. But either way, we're in the Super Bowl. Could we really be taken out by the Panthers, though? All right, going to the end of the game. Zero all, seven to zero. We take that. Come on. Come on. No, seven all, 14 to seven. Halftime score. We can live with a four-point lead. Now up by 11. Come on, one stop. Get the two-point on top of it. We're up by 10. The Panthers are getting stopped, but we're not moving. It is now an eight-point game. Their ball, and they're driving. Fourth and ten. It's not physically over, but there's a very good chance you lose this game if you're the Panthers, if you don't get this. Leverett's technically the worst player on defense, so that's who I'm going to use her. He's getting double teamed as well, so you can't really feel bad. I do help. One-on-one, -on -one, and he holds on to the three. I didn't click on because I felt like, you know, it was cheating. The AIs battled it out, and we lost the matchup. Of course, if they get this, it's not over, but it sure as hell doesn't look good. And they got time, but we could also have time if they score too early. Heath, I kind of, I also hit him late. I kind of did force the hand there. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, who do I use her? Like, I, I, I guess lever it again. Who had the leverage? How do we not pick that? This is such a hard situation to coach, though. I'm just going to move him over so I can take the double team with Leverett. Nope, I guess that's not possible. Pretty good coverage. I can see that opening. Leverett's on the ground. Good pass rush back of the end zone. A throw away. And could this team really do it from the three? Three yard line. The game is on the line. Can they do it? And right wide open there. He misses it. Gets a hand in there, but it's not good enough. Touchdown, Panthers. Who's their quarterback, by the way? It must be Tua. I didn't even notice the whole time. Their O-line locked up, though. Let me tell you. Like, we had no movement with four. Maybe could have went with the blitz, but I, I don't know. I just feel like it's more obvious to come with the blitz in that situation, no? But I suppose, you know, any of the plays, they could expect us to to not care about the clock. So it's maybe we should have went with the blitz. I don't know. But 
Isaiah Rogers forced to return it. Is this a bad decision by them? It is not. They say run it. I agree. Let's run it. Maybe Jonathan Taylor can crack one open. And he does! He's gone! 79 yards! Super Bowl Colts! What did they do? I mean, that's kind of unnecessary, but I'm going to let him have it. Um, my voice is kind of gone. Like, I can feel like it's not gone, but I can feel a warmth that is growing in my throat hole. I don't even know what's happening. This this was a wild one. They probably shouldn't have had that catch down the sideline, but they did with Kendall Fuller on him. We definitely shouldn't have had that run up the middle with Jonathan Taylor, but it's like, you know, people are pursuing so hard to try and grab him, and they didn't play back. That's their fault. They didn't play back, and the Colts are Super Bowl champions. Who would have actually thought that's kind of absurd for us to win like that? I absolutely have to see what the uh, you know how that play actually lined up because that was kind of crazy. Let me tell you something, kind of crazy. And knowing EA, they probably won't show it. <laughs> Just a an eight second, seventy nine yard rushing touchdown. Why would you want to see that? Oh, you want to see all these throwaways? You want to see? Oh, you want to see this throwaway, guys? Here, I got you. One sec. You want to see this throwaway? Watch this throwaway. Oh, look at this. This is going to be a textbook throwaway. Oh, my God. With a guy open in the back of the end zone on the line. Oh, my God. Look at that ball. I don't even know where it went. It's so beautiful. But regardless, maybe a weird way to end it. You can say what you... Wow. Jonathan Taylor, obviously, we had that big run. But without it, he still put up over, a, what, 150? Uh, yeah, like 180, 190. Numbers are hard. Uh, receiving was definitely not it. This past game has just been terrible in the last three playoff games. The edge, the two edge monsters together have been great, and that's the game. Wow. If their kicker doesn't miss, I mean, it probably doesn't matter technically because this situation changes a little bit, but wow. Yeah. Um, unexpected, to say the least. That's that's all I can really say about the uh, that specific win. That will be the rebuild of, you know, the Indianapolis Colts. Bryce Young really took a step up this last season here, though. Looking like a god. Obviously, a bunch of XP for, you know, winning different uh, types of awards. Best QB and all that. Which, once again, how did he not go up and dead? Did they remove that? Was that an accident by them? Uh, but let's take a look at Pittman, who we just looked at, actually. Never mind. He's really good, though, obviously. Absolutely insane. His speed isn't terribly bad, either. He's literally like Mike Evans in the game now, but... Maybe a little bit stronger, I guess. A.T. Perry, route running, never really got there. Release is insane. Catching's insane. Speed's okay. Let's take a look at Taylor. He's got to be like 90 plus in every rating, right? Juke move, truck move, stiff arm. Just needs to get that spin up too, and he's literally the best running back in not in history almost. Freeland, who's allowing like 17 sacks a season. 90 overall. Obviously, his finesse blocking sucks, which is, you know, he's a tackle. Way to go, EA. Quentin Nelson probably doesn't matter too much, but I'm still curious to see those ratings. A pass block finesse is a little iffy, but yeah, he's a really good lineman, obviously. Center, I don't care about. I don't care about the rest of the line, to be fair. Noah Fant, 87 overall. It was a risk to sign him, and it was a risk that paid off. He has been amazing for us. He got two dev ups in his time here, and really appreciate his help a lot. Uh, I don't really care about those linebackers too much, but McGrone, a 79 overall. I put him as the number two sub linebacker this year, and seemed to help him out a little bit. He's very smart. Block shed's okay, but his coverage is rough. Uh, let's take a look at Mr. Nick Cross, who got a dev up like right out the gate in this. Two dev ups right out the gate in this one. Uh, 87 zone, super fast, and only getting better as he's, what, 24, maybe 25 at this point, which is absurd how fast uh, and he got that dev up and all that strong we just got. But let's take a look at his ratings. Uh, you know, He's like right up there with where Blackman was, and he's obviously got so many more years to prove himself. Uh, you know, Newsom's on a guy we really developed. Weldon, it was weird. He got a year, you know, rookie start, and then he started going down the depth chart like one slot every single season, which super strange. Van Ness, let's take a look at my man Van Ness, who has had really good years ever since joining us. 95 power moves, 78 block shed. Speed might have went up like one. Maybe his Excel went up one. Nothing crazy. And then Quiddy Pay, who has been great ever since, uh, you know, this rebuild started as well. Not quite as good as Van Ness, but still really good. And he's actually a superstar 
And then Heath, who I think was actually near a 90 finesse last time I checked, really learned a lot sitting as a backup. Yeah, 91 finesse. Blockshed's obviously lacking, but really good player. And that is going to be it for our realistic style rebuild of the Indianapolis Colts featuring a trade-up to the first pick overall with the Chicago Bears, which isn't the craziest thing possible. Let me know what you guys think will actually happen with that first pick, with the fourth pick from the Colts. Do you see them maybe trading down, maybe getting uh, Levis? Uh, I don't know. I, I think the Colts are have been a quarterback away for a while now and probably a new coaching staff away as well, in fairness. Or do you guys see maybe Derek Carr? You know, there's been a lot of news about him being cut or traded from the Raiders. Uh, maybe that's the move, perhaps. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Bears are going to draft one overall or are they going to trade down? There's a lot of uh, question marks with that that super sell job by the Texans, right? Things open up quite a bit more now with that. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate your continued support, especially if you know any of you guys are here watching this late into the video. Maybe follow me on Twitter, General Picare, and then second channel, Picare Plays, for non manic content. We are playing high on life and kind of uploaded that a little more frequently than most of my series. So, you know, maybe we'll get done with that and... Move on to another game like God of War Ragnarok or something. If you have any ideas for rebuilds in the future or just a realistic team I haven't done yet, let me know in the comment section below. That is it. Maybe an upload on Saturday or Sunday, but playoff football, so I don't know about that one. Definitely back on Monday, though. And, yeah, hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!